Got some grass stains, check. Yeah. Blood, check. Yeah, Sweat, go. check. Okay, yeah, tape coming off, check. Yeah. And victory, check. Yeah. Yeah. On this week's edition of Titans All Access, excitement from Amy Adams Strunk on the Titans' new stadium project. Check. Talking ball with general manager John Robinson. Check. A conversation with not only one, but two rising defensive leaders. Check. I think he caught That's it. That's a catch. Dave McGinnis breaking down Austin Hooper's big day against the Colts. Check. We've got all of that and plenty more right now on Titans All Access. Derrick Henry, the stiff arm, throws a man down. Get you some. Mitchell had the hit, and the Titans have recovered. Sack! Jeffrey Simmons, touchdown! Tight, how about a little finger roll? It's intercepted, Andrew Adams. Throws ball up in the air, intercepted, fires. It's not even November, and the Titans already have two wins over the Indianapolis Colts. Welcome to Titans All Access. She's Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith, and the Tennessee Titans beat the Indianapolis Colts last Sunday for the second time in October. Final score 19 to 10. Amy Wells was on the sidelines for Titans Radio. When did you know the Titans had this one? Well, Mike, I knew it all along. Had them all the way? I had them all the way. No, probably somewhere in the middle of the second half. I knew the Titans were gonna get it done. Well, the Titans got it done with some big plays and finally some fourth quarter points. Ryan Tannehill led the way, along with Derrick Henry, as you would expect. But tight end Austin Hooper had not one, not two, but three big plays in the second half. Let's talk to Coach Dave McGinnis and go beneath the surface as we look at Austin Hooper's big second half performance. Hey guys, Coach Mack here with this week's Beneath the Surface, powered by Microsoft Surface, beginning now. Today we're going to look at three outstanding catches, very pivotal catches in, in this last ball game against the Colts by tight end Austin Hooper. The empty set, three by two, it's a five up defensive scheme, a three man game on top, linebacker fires the A gap, Ben Jones does an outstanding job coming back on the wrapper in this stunt. Zaire Franklin, the leading NFL tackler, not this time. Excellent move by Hooper for a critical first down. Nick Westbrook Aquina also helping with the block. This was a critical third down conversion at this point in the ball game to begin Austin Hooper's record-setting day for himself as a Titan receiving the ball. Now we are in 12 personnel, two tights, two wides, one back, and forms a three by one. Indy's in a four-man rush. Now they are playing man-to-man. -man. Bobby Okereke is the low hole rat. Tannehill has great location throw right by Okereke's ear right here. Outstanding adjustment and a combat catch, meaning he's going to be contacted as soon as he catches the ball by Hooper for another critical first down. Now they're in a two by two formation. We're in a four man front. Indy goes to a zone cover two scheme. Offensive line does an excellent job picking up the three man game to the quarterback's left side. Tannehill now sidesteps the pressure right up the middle in the cylinder. And again, another great job by Hooper settling down between the two safeties that are the two high safeties in this cover two scheme who both converge on the ball. If you'll watch closely, this ball is moved five times before Hooper secures it with outstanding concentration on the sixth time. This is not only a pivotal catch, it also forces Frank Reich to challenge the catch, losing a timeout, which proves very, very vital at the end of this ball game. And that was an outstanding win by the Titans, 19 to 10 over the Indianapolis Colts and a really nice day by Austin Hooper. The Titans are going to need more big plays for Austin Hooper and the offense as they go to Houston this Sunday, and some big plays for the defense. Speaking of the defense, Amy Wells, they had some big plays, a lot of big plays in the win over Indianapolis. Oh my gosh, it was beautiful. The interceptions, the forced fumbles, oh, I could go on and on. And we're going to talk to some of the leaders on the Titans defense later in the program. But on the other side of this break, the Titans released some renderings of their new stadium and it might have made some noise. We're going to show you that and a lot more. So stick around. Speaking of a big play. <laughs> well done. Welcome back to Titans All Access. It is time for the Hughes and Coleman Decision of the Week. 
Mike Keith, last week the Titans announced that they'd reached an agreement with Mayor Cooper to build a new stadium and start looking into what that process is going to look like. So the question is, the decision to build a new stadium, a good one? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely it's a great decision. When you've seen the renderings and you feel the excitement and you know what it's going to do for the Tennessee Titans, for Nashville, for Middle Tennessee, for the Mid-South, it's a great decision and we're all extremely excited. The person who's probably most excited, Titans owner Amy Adams Strunk. I had a chance to visit with her to discuss this big news, a new stadium on its way to downtown Nashville. What is it to start with that you're specifically most excited about? Oh my gosh, well, I'm excited for the city of Nashville and the state of Tennessee because I think this is gonna be a real game changer with these big events that will come to town and I'm excited for our fans. You are one of the most fan-centric owners in all of sports anywhere. Why are the fans so important to you and have you kept them in mind so much through this entire process leading to this moment? Well, thank you for that. But you know what? I, I always have the fans in my thoughts. When, whenever I make a decision, whether if it's something to do with football or something to do with the stadium or something to do with the new stadium, I'm always thinking about what are they gonna like? From their experience, what are you hoping that the first thing that really jumps out to them about the new stadium is, is all about. What do you want for the fans first and foremost? It was so important as the last two years, this journey that we've been on, that, that this stadium looks like Nashville. We didn't want it to look like a stadium in another city. It has to have that Nashville feel, which I think is gonna be great and gonna be different than what's around the country. But when you get inside the stadium, it was important to us that every single seat is perfect. It's just gonna be a great seat. Burke Nihill has been talking about the stadium and referring to it as the people's house, meaning that he wants everybody in the community to feel like there's something in it for them and to feel like they have that sort of ownership. When that's said, what does that mean to you as the owner? You know, our mission statement is win, serve, entertain. And we just don't say that, we believe it. And we don't want it to be just a Sunday football stadium. We're saving 12,000 square feet for a community center inside the stadium, which, you know, we hope will host job fairs, Metro students, let them come have classrooms there, nonprofits. It, we hope it will be all things. So you could have a Super Bowl on Sunday and host a job fair students, whatever, on Friday. I want to wrap up with this one. Your dad took a chance on this city over a quarter century ago. I'd say it's worked out okay. If he I'd were, say. If he were here right now and he saw the renderings we're going to take a look at in just a minute and he knew what the plan was and how people have come together to make this happen, what in the world would he say? Oh my gosh, he'd be so excited. You know, I'm gonna tell you a little story about my dad. When he was making the move from Houston, Nashville was the only city he would look at. And the people that were helping him tried to get him, go to LA, Mr. Adams, you need to at least see these other spots. And he wasn't having it. He was like, I'm going to Nashville. Mayor Bredesen and I are gonna get this done. He loved Tennessee and he loved Nashville, and there was gonna be no other home for him. So he would be so proud. Mike Keith, one thing is for sure, you can feel the excitement, not only throughout the Titans organization, but throughout all of Nashville. All of Nashville people are fired up. People also fired up right now about the Titans defense and the young leaders that are emerging, like, for example, Christian Fulton and David Long. Guess who's next on the Nissan Insider? Christian Fulton and David Long. David Long. Stay tuned. <laughs>Welcome back to Titans All Access, coming to you from the Bet MGM studio. David Long and Christian Fulton are two guys who are making an impact on the Titans defense in a lot of different ways. So Mike Keith had the opportunity to sit down with both of them to talk about not being the young guys anymore and their increased roles on the defense. Wentz takes the snap. 
Looking, throwing, intercepted! Intercepted, David Long! <laughs> and the Titans <laughs> have no! shut down the Commanders! Yes! At yes! the two! Yes, yes, that is a hell yes! That was the big play, and it came on the last play! All right, so if David doesn't intercept the pass at Washington, what's going to happen, Christian? You're not getting in that end zone. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's one thing I'm saying. Either way it go, you know, uh, he made the play, you know, but uh, just having each other's back, you know, playing the defense, you know, um, just trying to make a play, you know, to make sure that they don't score. So uh, just doing my job. Who is your teammate that you would say you have emulated the most to realize what it's like to be a leader on defense? I would say probably KB off the rip. Um, Jeff, both vocal guys, you know, something that, that I want to be more like, you know, just to have that just like easy flowing. You know, come out, you know, motivate the team and stuff like that. Also, Wesley Woodyard, you know, when I got here, um, he was in my room, a guy that I, you know, looked and see how he does stuff, you know, take care of his body, you know, preparation, all that, you know, so. I mean, I'll say, you know, KB and Imani, you know, guys that, you know, I came in and they pretty much already had their role figured out. Um, you know, both, like I said, K, like he said, KB is a vocal guy for our, for our back end, for our defense, really. And um, Hook also vocal, but he's more chill, you know, more so how I am, you know, so I kind of take, Thing for both of those guys, you know, I feel like they're great leaders. When did you know that you were going to have to be a leader on this defense? That you just weren't one of the 11 guys that you got to step up and be David Long, one of the leaders of the Titans defense? Um, I think that just came with my play, you know, seeing how my play affects other players and how my energy affects it and the green dot, you know, that makes it more, you know, I'm, I'm calling it a huddle, so, you know, I, I feel like I'm going to have to set the tone, you know, regardless, you know, so. Um, it just came to me. Um, I really wasn't trying to press to be a leader, like trying to speak up and be out front. It just came to me, you know, uh, I just ran with it. When did you know you weren't just a starting corner? You had to be one of the dudes. Yeah, coming in into this year, you know, just being, you know, one of the older guys in the uh, DB room, really the oldest corner. You know, I know I had to uh, change, really, my approach to things, you know, because I'm not really a loud guy. But um, just like he said, um, Guys feed off energy, you know, and however I can, you know, I just want to bring that energy to that young group that we have, you know, just to let them know that um, no matter how young you are in this league, you know, you can always, you know, make an impact on this team no matter how it is. You got to make sure we talk every play. Uh, make, that, make the communication go across the board. Yeah! Hurry up! Let's go. Let's get off the field. Show me something. Hey, set the tone, man. Hey, set the tone. You got to come see us. Let's smack some. That's what I want to see. It's Kevin's defense, it's Jeff's defense, and now it's your defense. I mean, the fans are looking to you to make it happen. Your teammates are looking to you to make it happen. Uh, stepping into that role early, you know, like I said, it's allowed me to get out of my comfort zone and not only make me a better player, but uh, my teammates around me. So I see the impact, you know, that, uh, that I can have. And um, I mean, it's been fun stepping into that role for me, to be honest. So uh, I just look to, uh, to continue thri to thrive in that role. Me personally, I think that was just always the mission. You know, once getting into the to the league, you know, this is the highest level of our, our profession. You know, so we don't want to get here just to get here. You know, we want to make the most out of it. You know, so um, however we get there, you know, how quick it comes, you know, how, how slow it comes, you know, just stay in the process. You know, it just it just came. You know, so I think you know we, we're dealing with it. it. Has ups and downs. You know, it has wins and losses. You know, but. All in all, I think it's, a, uh, it's good for us. Coming up next, Titans General Manager John Robinson stops by the Bet MGM Studios, and we're talking a little ball, so stick around. Time to talk ball, presented by Duncan with Titans General Manager John Robinson. Titans, of course, come off a 19 to 10 win over the Colts. And I want to go back to that for just a moment. When you became the general manager here nearly seven years ago, you said you wanted guys who were tough, dependable, team first. And it was repeated over and over again. Saw a lot of that toughness on Sunday in the win. So I want to ask, where did the toughness stand out the most to you in Sunday's victory over the Colts? Yeah, I mean, I think you could see elements of it in all three phases uh, of the game, Mike. I think on the kickoff cover, we saw guys run down there, whether it was Dylan Cole with a big tackle, Monty Rice with a big, you know, physical tough hit. Uh, defensively, with the way we were able to stop the run and continue to get pressure, we had 10 hits on the quarterback. 
Um, but I think the best example was the first play of the last drive in the fourth quarter. Uh, we ran it up the middle. Derek kind of got stymied around five yards. And then you see this sea of light blue jerseys just throw themselves into the pile um, without regard for anything and move him another five or six yards to get the first down. Uh, to me, that was, uh, that was toughness uh, exemplified in that play right there. What does the element of having Bud Dupree in the lineup add to the defense? Well, I think his size and, and power and, and length and uh, the intensity with which he plays the game, um, when he can get, get knocked back on those tackles in the run game and really kind of you know, force everything to funnel back one way or bounce out to the outside, that's impactful. Um, and then in the pass game, whether it's coming around the edge with speed or coming inside with power and violence and collapsing that pocket, um, it's, had, it's good to have a big, long physical player like Bud back out there uh, to really impact the game. The Titans head to Houston on Sunday. Last season, quarterback Davis Mills played well against the Titans. What have you seen from him in his second season? Well, I think he's more conf uh, confident in, in his play, uh, the players around him. Um, he, he plays with toughness. He's not afraid to turn his back to the defense and then went back around there on the play action pass and rip it. Um, he throws a good ball. He's got good command of the offense. Uh, you can see that he's improved uh, from his first year. Houston has a new weapon in running back Damian Pierce. What has the rookie from Florida really added to this offense that you can see? Yeah, he's really running well, Mike. I mean, he runs behind his pads well. Um, he's got good stature for a back. Uh, he's got a good balance of patience um, and instincts uh, in that he lets the blocks develop. He gives them time uh, for the play to get going. Uh, and he'll run it the way it's supposed to be ran. But then if he sees a hole on the other side, one way or the other, uh, he's just got great vision to find it and, and gets in the hole. And uh, he makes positive yards. He's a really good football player and off to a fast start as a rookie. Lovey Smith is known for his defenses. What do the Titans need to do against Houston's defense? Yeah, I think we've got to handle their disruptive play style. They like to attack and hit gaps, uh, let those linebackers run free. They've got a lot of speed at linebacker. Uh, so we've got to do a good job of handling the movement of the, that they do up front with the line uh, and, and getting on these linebackers that play with speed, covering them up uh, so we can get the run game going. John, thanks so much for your time. Always enjoy, Mike. Titans General Manager John Robinson talking ball with us, presented by Duncan. Coming up, we've got your Titans game ticket for Houston and a great memory from 15 years ago when an NFL record was set. That's next on Titans All Access. It was 15 years ago this month when the Tennessee Titans beat the Texans in Houston 38-36. The final score says the game was wild, but it barely tells the story of that day, especially the story of Titans kicker Rob Baronis. The Titans starting the game with a field goal attempt. Baronis from 52 yards away, and the Titans grab an early 3-0 lead. By halftime, Baronis had kicked five field goals, and the Titans led 22-7. More of the same for the Titans in the third quarter as Baronis kicked a sixth field goal and Chris Henry ran for the touchdown. Tennessee led after three quarters, 32 to seven. And then things got crazy, really crazy. The Texans scored 29 points in the fourth quarter, capped by a 53 yard touchdown pass from Sage Rosenfels to Andre Davis to take a 36-35 lead with 57 seconds to play. Tennessee had blown a 25-point lead. They had one last chance. After back-to-back -back incompletions, the Titans faced a third and 10 at their 37. Collins with a blitz coming. It's picked up. He throws deep downfield for Roy Dell Williams. He caught it at the 30, at the 25, and out of bounds near the 20-yard line. Oh, what a grab by Roy Dell Williams, and what a throw by Kerry Collins. 31 seconds remaining. They're going to put the football down at the 17. On third and 10, Collins burns him for 46. It's all on number two, the kicker who hails from Louisville, Kentucky who has tied an NFL record today and can vault himself past four others with a make here. Snap, set, kick on the way. Good! Comeback foiled, Titans four and two. Rob Baronis 
with an NFL record eighth made field goal. And the Titans send the remaining crowd here at Reliant Stadium home stunned and disheartened. It was a crazy, amazing day in Houston. One for the ages. One that is still recognized in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Rob Baronis became a legend that October day in Houston, Texas. That was 15 years ago in Houston. What about this weekend as the Titans return to Texas? Here's more of this week's Titans All Access. That was a good memory in Houston. The Titans hope to make more good memories in Houston this Sunday as they take on the Texans. Amy Wells has your Titans game ticket to fully get you ready. Well, Mike Keith, it starts off with an alert. Alert. Because Titans fans need to be aware Sunday's game at NRG Stadium kicks off at 3.05. That's right. Titans, Texans, this Sunday, 3.05. The Texans are 1-4-1 one, one in 2022. Quarterback Davis Mills has thrown for 1,350 yards, seven touchdowns, and five interceptions. Rookie running back Damian Pierce has carried the ball 106 times for 504 yards and three touchdowns. On defense, rookie safety Jalen Petrie has 24 solo tackles, one sack, two interceptions, and three and a half stuffs. As a team, the Texans have tallied 12 sacks, six interceptions, and two fumble recoveries. Again, game time is... 3.05. 3.05 Central. Titans radio coverage is on the air with Amy Wells and our good friend Rhett Bryan. Titans countdown at 2 o'clock. There are stations all over the region. Find the one nearest you and tune in. For Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith. Thanks for being with us for Titans All Access, and we'll see you next time.